Welcome, Newtons. I am your host, Brendan Quinn, and this is the first episode of Nutanix Community Edition. Today, we will cover hardware requirements, software collection, and the installation and formation of your very own single node Nutanix Community Edition deployment. For those of you who do not know, Nutanix Community Edition is an open source community supported version of Nutanix's Acropolis operating system that will allow you to take advantage of some of the very best data center technology available today in your personal lab. People are using CE today for hosting everything from their home automation and home theater to their self-enablement labs. Anyone with some basic computer skills should be able to follow along with this tutorial to get their environment up and running. If at any point in your attempt to follow along, you run into technical issues or notice that your experience is different than what I show here, feel free to hop on over to next.nutanix.com and post up your issue. A member of the community will gladly assist you in getting over your hurdles. If you do create a topic on Next related to this video, please post the link in the comments here so that others can benefit from your experience. Here you can see the recommended hardware. I'm not gonna read it out loud, but I will give you a moment to ingest it. Given the guidelines provided by the hardware recommendations page, I've decided to build out my own configuration based on a 6th gen Intel Nook I have affectionately dubbed Scully. With an Intel Core i7 quad core processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, two 512 gigabyte M.2 cards, this is one capable little machine. I also am going to need two USB 3.0 drives of at least 16 gigabytes in size, and we'll see why later. Being prepared, you're going to need your username and password for next.nutanix.com so that you can get some necessary files. You'll need rufus.exe from rufus.ie and your two USB drives. At this time, it's also a good idea to document your environment. I know that we will not all be using the same IP schemas or have the same IPs available, so I've created a little table for you to add your own IPs along with the different passwords that you will need to change once you have installed Community Edition. Please find an unused IP in your environment for each of the IPs I have listed here so that you can follow along easily with my video. All right, now that you've created that list, please follow along while I log into the Nutanix community website, next.nutanix.com, to retrieve our ISO files. If you do not yet have an account set up, please pause the video and create one now. Once you have logged in, scroll down to the large Nutanix Community Edition button and click to be redirected to a pinned post from our favorite community member, A. Luciani. You will need the installer ISO, vert io driver iso files and optionally the prism central deployment tar and metadata for pc deploy.zip files once you've started the downloads for these files you can navigate on over to rufus.ie and download rufus executable to be successful in your ce deployment rufus is the only bootable media creation tool that i recommend once Rufus downloads, go ahead and launch the executable to make sure that you select the smaller of your two thumb drives for this, if they are different sizes. Select the CE 2020-09-16 ISO we downloaded in the previous step as your boot selection, and notice that the volume label is automatically set to Phoenix. Do not edit that volume label, as having any other volume label will cause the installation to fail. Go ahead and click Start. Now that we have finished creating the bootable USB drive that will act as the installation media for Community Edition, let's take a moment to format your other USB drive using EXFAT. This second USB drive will be the AHV boot disk running the hypervisor for your CE node. Once you have both of these drives, properly prepared, you can eject them from your technician machine and plug them into your Community Edition node. You are now ready to begin installation. Now that the two thumb drives are plugged into your node, go ahead and power it on. 
the machine should boot to the Nutanix Community Edition installer prompt. For this video, we will want to keep the hypervisor as AHV. Press tab. In my case, I have a thumb drive formatted with XFAT for hypervisor installation labeled H, one M.2 card for CVM boot labeled C, a second M.2 card for the data labeled D, and a second thumb drive with a bootable Phoenix ISO labeled I. Press tab again to move to IP address configuration. Use the table you created earlier to replace the correct IP data for your environment in this step. First entering host and then CVM IP data. You can choose to select the create single node cluster box here, but I will be skipping it and showing you how to do the single node build from the command line. Continue on to the next page. Here, you will meticulously read and accept the end user license agreement. Once you have completed that, you can go ahead and start the installation process. Once installation completes, you will be prompted to unplug the Phoenix USB. Remember to leave the AHV boot USB plugged in and then press Y to reboot now. The reboot will complete the installation process and automatically boot to AHV. Once your Community Edition node boots into AHV, you will need to log in with the default root account and default password. At this point, we will want to ping the CVM, which is running in user space on this host, to ensure that it is up and running. Once it begins to respond, we can go ahead and SSH to the CVM to create the cluster. SSH space Nutanix at your CVM IP address. Accept the SHA key and provide the proper password, which seems to have taken me two tries. Now, I will clear my screen by typing clear and hitting enter. At this point, I can run the cluster creation script, which I will have posted below for your convenience. Just remember to use your CVM's IP address. Hit enter and watch as all of the services start up on the selected CVM. Once you are returned to the prompt and see the message that says success, you will be able to access your single node cluster. All right, Newtons. Thanks for tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, tune into our next episode of Nutanix Community Edition, where I will talk you through all of the necessary steps to build your first virtual machine running on Nutanix Community Edition with AHV. Thank you.